Before we begin, I want to talk about software. Adobe Illustrator is going to be my choice of software to use. You can use softwares like Inkscape, GIMP, uh, Affinity Designer, and Designer Design Evo. I've not used any other softwares for other than Adobe Illustrator, so I'm more comfortable with the Adobe Suite. But if you wanted some alternatives, those are just some that uh, I've listed. Uh, if you're just starting or if you're experienced. All right, so let's begin. So the process is more advanced, but it can still be achieved by a beginner or uh, anyone who's starting with just some extra research. But if you follow along, uh, you should be able to uh, just grasp the concept and be able to make it work as well. Uh, be sure to save often if your computer's older, problems with it crashing sometimes, put on auto save as well. So open your software. I already have mine open. I've placed my graphic that I'm going to be using for this example in here already. And this motif is what I'm going to be using. What you're going to be doing is you're going to turn it white. The reason why you want to turn it white, the laser is always going to engrave anything that indicates black. So any dark areas in here, the laser will indicate that as uh, it should engrave it. So what we're doing is we're going to select it by clicking and dragging over it and then clicking your color picker over here on the side on your toolbar. Double click that, select the furthest corner of that or you could put in F, 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 F. Uh, just press OK. Once you press OK, it'll turn white and that's what we want. Okay, so we want it to turn white uh, you can't see it once you click off of it, but if you drag and select the whole image, it's still there. Okay, what we want to do is we want to put a black background behind it so we can see what's going on. And if you see on my layers tab over here, um, you can see I have layer 2, graphic, and background. So what I'm going to do is going to click background and I'm going to go up to this rectangle tool if you hover over it it'll tell you also the hotkey we're going to be using click and drag from corner to corner and you should have a white box because our color picker hasn't been changed so double click your color picker and choose black there you go and now that we have it black and white that's all you really need for this to work go over to your background over here select this middle button over here where it's empty and a lock should come up that locks this whole layer and allows you to work just on the graphic layer click and drag and select the whole image here because we're going to offset this image create a border surrounding the whole image we're going to use that as our backer so we're going to go up to object we're going to click object and go down to paths and then offset paths object paths and offset paths click offset paths let's play around with it maybe an eighth inch and then click on the number four that's still too big we kind of want it closer to the actual image let's try this one let's try seven there you go go to our pathfinder tool here under your properties and you're just going to merge it with this merging tool right here merge together okay so that actually merges the whole thing now how do we get rid of the middle here we only want the border so we're going to go over here to swap fill okay and stroke and it's going to look like that if we click it it's going to select the whole thing we want to double click this so that it becomes two solid forms okay this is going to be one line right here one line right here we're going to click this line and we're just going to simply delete it so now that it's deleted you can just press escape or press this arrow over here okay i'm going to press escape and once we press escape we're left behind the border that surrounds the motif that we just offset so we can create a backer for this and we're going to go back over here and click the swap fill and stroke and then we're going to get a solid form so in order to see what we're doing we're going to click just any random color i'm just going to choose this orange here how do we get this underneath everything so right click and under arrangements it's going to say bring to the back so it's going to bring to the back only in that layer 
so it won't go behind the black you already have as a background so send to back once you send to back you'll notice that you'll see all of the home motif on there so now that we turn this black and then we're going to select this whole thing and what you can do is you could go to your assets we're going to click all of these select for export as a single asset and you're going to see that show up over here on your assets okay so i'm going to name it motif graphic just because that's going to be what i'm going to use you can name it whatever you want click this one do the same thing and as single and then you're going to say offset graphic motif now you got two and we're going to turn them into pngs okay for this we're going to do resolution instead and we're going to bump it up to 300 enough resolution for photoshop to deal with and we're going to export and once we export we're going to put it in a folder where we can find it easily and we're going to select folder and now we're going to open it up in photoshop let's open the offset first you can open the actual graphic place embedded motif graphic put the motif graphic in there it should lay right in the center there and that's what we wanted to do we're going to rasterize this so right click layer and then rasterize once you rasterize it now it's a workable layer once it's workable so layer layer styles outer glow click outer glow and you'll be met with a menu it's already have my preferences on there just going down the three boxes is structure elements and quality first we're going to start with structure uh, you can use screen or normal whichever one you want to use i'm going to put mine on screen and then opacity if you want to you can change to 100 percent because that's probably going to give you the best angle zero noise on there and we're going to leave that white transparent for elements under elements technique be precise okay and then spread you don't need to do spread at all size if you have a lot of detail and you want like really small tapers then you can lessen the sides you can change it any way you want so in quality leave anti analyst off and then range you want to do 60 the darker it is the less likely it is to have a taper okay so 60 would be great because then you you'll see a prominent taper when it actually lasers so you don't see it now you don't see a side view at all because we can't side view this this would actually be tapered like the contour that you chose so once we all have that set we're just going to press ok and you're ready to go uh, we want to do save save this as a file so that we could come back and do changes if we need to and then we're going to export this as a png and we're going to change this name because we don't want it to overwrite our original graphic so we're just going to do 01 version 1 that's the photoshop step now we're going to move on to the glowforge uploading it into glowforge and putting the settings in all right so now we have our glowforge open we want to upload the artwork so click the plus line and upload and it's going to upload it and if your artwork is super detailed it might take minutes we're going to give a margin of just a quarter inch okay we're going to choose stamp and if we look at it we're going to zoom in here and look at it so it might look kind of fuzzy around the edges here so that's going to tell you that it's actually going to uh, laser in there it's going to taper off so you'll see that in the actual video not going to cut it out okay so we actually have to put the offset image in here too we need it to be an svg in order to cut on the glowforge so we're going to save this offset graphic over here as an svg as well so we're going to export that as an svg now we can drop the offset as an SVG in here. So make sure it's an SVG. Make sure it's two inches by two inches. Make sure this is two inches by two inches. And just align those as best you can. So it's going to engrave the stamp onto there first, the motif, and then it's gonna cut it out of the stamp material. And there you go, you're gonna have your stamp. And in the next video will be how it's actually made and the materials used for stamping. Thank you for sticking around and listening. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope they help you. Please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.